Hi everybody, I'm Patrick from Rocky Mountain Style, and today I am pretty stoked to be bringing you my first video ever about watches. I'm a big watch fan, I always have been, and when I started this channel, watches were going to be an integral part of it. However, you know, given that you only have so many watches and you can't pick up a new watch, you know, every week or every other week, like you can a shirt or a t-shirt or a pair of jeans or something like that, I decided to slow roll the watches a bit and, and wait a little bit later in the channel's life before I started bringing those up. So stick around. I'm going to tell you about my current watch collection and when I got them, why I got them, and just in general what I like about watches and how I got started. Like a lot of you guys, I'm sure, I got my start in watches when I was a kid. The first watch I can remember having was a Timex Ironman. This was way back before there were smart watches, before there were any advanced features on these watches. It mostly just had a, you know, a stopwatch, a small light, you could set alarms, things like that. And I remember getting it on vacation. I can't remember where we were, but my parents got it for me. And I remember sitting in the back of the car, driving somewhere at nighttime, just hitting that watch nonstop. And my dad telling me, hey, you're going to wear that battery out. You know, don't, don't wear it out on the first night. Um, I also remember setting the alarm and then it went off at, uh, in the middle of the night. Didn't know how to turn it off, of course, but you know, you live and you learn, and I'm sure we've all been there. Uh, from that Timex Ironman, I graduated many years later to a fossil watch. I was probably 14 at the time, something like that, 13, 14. Uh, just starting to become a little fashion conscious, you know, as, as you grow up and you want people to, you know, like how you look and things like that. You want to look put together, more grown up perhaps. So I, I started getting uh, fossil watches for Christmas, birthdays, things like that. And I had a couple. I remember one in particular. It was, uh, you know, and, and now I know what it was modeled off of, but at the time I didn't. It was a blue dial with a stainless steel bracelet, and then it had gold laid into the bracelet as well. Gold tone, obviously not, not real gold. Um, but it was modeled after a, a Rolex Submariner, you know, blue dial, two-tone Rolex sub. So I thought that was pretty interesting back in the day. I had one of those. I had a couple other different fossils throughout my teenage years. Then when I went to college, I remember asking for a citizen watch. And you know, these were in the mall. You could see them in the, the cases, you know, at, at Zales or K Jewelers or, you know, whatever your mall jewelry store happened to be. So I would walk by and see those and think, man, those are, those are really high end. Those are really classy. And at the time, I believe this was close to around when, you know, the Citizen Eco Drive uh, movement started to be popularized. And I couldn't believe that, you know, the watch would charge from the sun, you know, what a concept, right? But um, I got a stainless steel one. I wanted the titanium one, I remember, uh, but at the time it was too expensive and my folks wouldn't, wouldn't pick it up for Christmas or anything like that. I think it was maybe, I don't know, 300 bucks, something like that. And, and I wasn't really working much, so I didn't have a lot of extra income to spend. However, uh, I had that Citizen watch quite a while. I picked up probably two or three other citizen watches in my 20s. And then I kind of went through a bit of a hiatus where I really wasn't wearing watches at all, you know, through my through my late 20s and into my mid 30s, really. So I, I had quite a long period of time. Um, and one day I just started thinking, you know, I really liked wearing watches. Why, why don't I wear watches anymore? Um, so I started doing research on YouTube. I discovered mechanical watches because, you know, back in the day, it was all about what a watch looked like, the, the construction the artistry of it, the engineering really didn't play into it for me. It was all about looks only. But I began watching some videos um, of some prominent YouTubers. Um, the Urban Gentry with TGV was, was cheap amongst those. And he really helped me grow my appreciation for watches in general and mechanical watches. So with that said, um, the first, you know, and I'll say expensive, put it in air quotes here, because um, I, I bought this about three years ago. I was you know, 35 years old, so you do the math there. Um, the first watch I bought was this Glycine Airman. I believe the reference is a GL0067. Um, so it's a 42 millimeter, uses an ETA 2824 movement. And um, I kind of fell in love with the story of this watch, and that's why I picked it up. Um, you know, U.S. pilots in, in Vietnam needed a way to synchronize time with each other, and they bought glycines, from what I understand, out of their own pockets, which was pretty cool. You know, a small Swiss watchmaker, which was not super well known at the time, as far as I know. But these guys, uh, these pilots in Vietnam, you know, flying sorties and things wore these watches. And, and I thought that was really cool. Um, the one I have, of course, is a, a more modern version. Um, you know, since Invicta bought out uh, glycine, they're part of the Invicta group now. 
the designs have changed a little bit, but um, you know, I, I picked it up, I think on a, a gray market website, the Joma shop or something like that for, I don't know, 300 bucks on a, on a black Friday sale. And, and I was, I was thrilled with that. Um, I still like the watch. I think it's a strap monster. You can put all sorts of different things on it and I'm pretty happy with it. So the next watch I bought was pretty soon after that. Um, so I probably had this one two and a half years or so. Uh, this is an Orient Mako 2. Uh, they don't show them on their websites as uh, by those names. But um, so this one's great. Orient is a neat brand. Um, they are, I believe, owned under the, the Seiko Epson umbrella with, with Seiko. So they're part of that family. They've been around for you know 70 years or so. They make in-house movements, which is really cool. Uh, I don't believe they're manufactured in Japan, but, but they are designed, um, original in-house movement designs uh, with the Orient company. So this one in particular, the Mako 2, I really like because of the way the Arabics are placed at uh, 12, 9, and 6. It's, it's, in my mind, and this is kind of loose, it's indicative of a bit of the Rolex Explorer, but I think the proportions are really clean. The, the numerals aren't too big. There's a lot of balance with the watch. Um, I picked this up probably 150 bucks, something like that. Mineral crystal, you know, the, the bracelet's a little bit jingly as you get with, with watches at this price point. But I, I liked it so much, I actually, um, you know, through another YouTuber I watched quite a bit of, uh, Mark from Long Island Watch, um, he started offering um, sapphire crystals for lots of different Seiko products and Orient products. So I picked up a sapphire crystal for this and got it installed at my local uh, watch shop. So now I don't have to worry about scratches, which really bugs me. Um, and this thing gets a lot of wear. Uh, I don't wear it daily. I don't wear any of my watches daily. I like to switch them up too much, but it gets a lot of wear and I'm a big fan of it. Um, and for the value, um, you know, 150 bucks plus another 50 bucks or so to buy the crystal and get it installed. I think, you know, automatic watch, sapphire movement, in-house movement from a, from a company um, that's been around for a while with some heritage. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the next watch was this Timex Metropolitan, I believe is what it's called. I don't believe these are offered anymore for sale, but um, if I can find a picture, I'll throw one up here. Uh, my wife got me this for Christmas because as I was starting to accumulate watches, um, and, and I'll, I'll note now, this isn't every watch I've bought. I have bought some other watches, some lower end ones uh, that I just bought because they were cheap or they were on sale because I was trying to, you know, I have to have every kind of watch. I need a dive watch. I need a dress watch. You know, I need this. I need that. A field watch. And I accumulated some I wasn't too thrilled about. Um, some of them I've given away. Some of them I've sold on um, OfferUp or, or a Craigslist or things like that. But uh, my wife got me this one for Christmas three years ago. Um, it's really thin. Obviously, you won't be able to see it on the camera there. But uh, it's super thin. It doesn't have a seconds hand, which I thought was kind of classy. So when you look at it, it's just still. You know, it's, you know, I'm not exactly sure if I'm using this term right, but it's kind of art deco in its styling. Um, I don't wear this a ton, mostly because I've got a lot better options now for dress watches, but you know, it was a gift for my wife, so, so I'm always keeping that. And then uh, fast forward another year um, for our seventh wedding anniversary, my wife got me this, and this was my first, in my mind, my first proper luxury Swiss watch. Um, definitely on the low end of Swiss watches, but this Hamilton Khaki Navy Scuba Automatic, quite the mouthful. Um, Got it with the uh, sort of blue and white, but in real life, it looks more silver, uh, the blue and white colorway. Um, you know, dive watch, not a proper dive watch. It's not ISO certified or anything. Um, you know, Swiss automatic movement, uh, you know, technically in-house, um, since Hamilton's owned by the, by the huge Swatch conglomerate. Um, they use a special modified movement that gives it a longer power reserve at the expense of um, its beat frequency. So not as high of hertz beat frequency, but, but more time um, on the power reserve. Really huge fan of that one. Actually, I'm going to put this one on. This one, I really like the, um, just the weight of it and the bracelet. The bracelet's super thick, and I like these. Um, I guess they're supposed to be like H's maybe, like Hamilton, but the, the sort of square mid-links here I'm a big fan of, and the watch is just super hefty. But um, it fits me great, I think, and at 40 millimeters, um, I think it's the perfect size for my wrist. Um, not sure how big my wrist is, to be honest. Maybe I'll measure it and, and pop the number up here. But yeah, this is a special watch. Um, bought it here in town from an authorized Hamilton dealer. But yeah, seventh wedding anniversary for my wife. So it's a big fan of Hamilton in general. And I guess before we move on, if you guys don't know about Hamilton, they were an American manufacturer. I believe they started out in the you know late to mid-1800s in Pennsylvania manufacturing watches. 
uh, and did in America all the way up until I think the 60s, including for World War II. They, they helped outfit all the troops in uh, the European theater and probably the Pacific theaters with uh, field watches. So when, when pressed into service, you know, they, they answered the call from the U.S. government, which, which I think is pretty cool. So a lot of those guys were wearing Hamiltons on their wrist, and, and you can today, too, for, for really not, not much money. Uh, they do offer some watches that get up into the multiple thousands, but ones in their khaki series, especially, you know, the khaki mechanical, the field watches, and some of these scubas can all be had for less than $1,000. Um, and a lot of times you can get them for significantly less, too, uh, which is pretty cool. So Hamilton is pure class in my book, as, as TGV might say. Um, next watch was more of a, a purchase for necessity than for pure desire. Now, G-Shocks are super cool, as anyone will tell you. But this particular one I bought because um, at the start of me working from home more, you know, about three years ago, um, connect the dots if you want, uh, I wanted to start making sure I got all my steps in, you know, working from home, I was, I was less active and things like that. So um, I was looking for a watch, you know, not like a Fitbit or anything, but I wanted an actual watch that did step counting. And there are surprisingly few options out there unless you just want a generic looking smartwatch, which I didn't, right? I wanted something that was more of a, a proper watch. So this particular G-Shock, uh, and I'll put the reference number up here, um, has a step counter uh, and not a ton else. It's got all the normal digital watch stuff, right? But uh, this watch actually gets quite a bit of, of wrist time as well. Um, I like the, the brown tone. It ends up matching a lot of you know, belts or you know, chinos, you know, if you wear light colored boots, things like that. So it actually turns out to be a little more stylish than I thought it would be. But you know, any proper watch collection is probably not complete without a G-Shock. So, so there you have it. That's my G-Shock. Um, <laughs> I, I started getting kind of, uh, kind of bored with normal watches. So, so I took a little bit of a hiatus and, and I finally convinced myself that it was a good investment to buy, um, you know, my first proper Swiss luxury watch. So about, oh, what is it, January, about 14 months ago, um, you know, been saving up some money, um, decided to pull the trigger on the uh, Omega Seamaster uh, 300M Professional 007 edition, the one from No Time to Die, so the most current one. Um, this thing I sort of just fell in love with when I saw it in person. Um, bought it at uh, Hyde Park Jewelers in Denver. Shout out to those guys. They are awesome up there. They have a great selection, um, not sponsored at all, but uh, they always treat you well, and it's, it's a fun shop just to go and, and try things on. But when I went up for the first time looking to spend some serious coin, I looked at so many different things um, and even looked at regular Seamasters. Uh, the one I like in particular is the, um, the Seamaster with the white dial, um, black bezel, and the, uh, the black rubber strap. I almost bought that, but seeing this uh, 007 edition there, I, I kind of just fell in love with it. And it made me have a memory back to when I was younger. Um, so this is probably in between having my... Um, my Timex Ironman that I talked about and my um, fossil watches. So I was probably, you know, 12, 13, something like that. And TBS, the cable station was running, you know, a bond marathon. Um, you know, I believe when GoldenEye was coming out, they were showing all the, the old bond movies on, on TBS and they would show two or three a night. So one started, you know, dinner time, one was, you know, a little bit later. And then there was another one that was super late. Right. And I couldn't stay up that late. So I, I convinced my parents to let me VHS them all. So at one point I had nearly every Bond movie on VHS. And this was of course during the days of commercials. And this was also at the time when Omega just started their partnership with, with the 007 franchise and Pierce Brosnan in specific. And they released that first uh, blue dial, sort of wave dial quartz uh, Seamaster. And I remember thinking to myself, Omega Seamaster, what a cool name, you know? And, and you know, with the coolness of 007 and Pierce Brosnan and this watch that was on almost every commercial break, it sort of got burnt into my brain. And as I started looking at this, I had those memories. And I thought, you know, maybe there's some part of me liking watches growing up from that point on that had to do with thinking that Omega Seamaster was so cool. So as soon as I thought about that, I decided to, to spring for the extra uh, money that, you know, that this one costs over the regular Seamaster and pick it up. Um, it comes with a really cool uh, watch roll uh, or case, whatever you want to call it here, you know, with some, with some stuff on it. So as you can see here, I don't have this on the NATO strap or the titanium Milanese that it comes with. Um, I did buy the one with the NATO strap because buying that titanium bracelet is $1,100 and that was a little tough to, to swallow. But yeah, so it does come with this really cool colored NATO. Um, 
I do like NATO sometimes, not all the time, but with this one, just because the, the, the clasp and everything is branded, you know, it's got the Omega there and it says 007 here. I didn't want to get scratches on it. So I picked up a couple different straps to wear with this. Um, the first one, which actually looks really good, is just a uh, sort of a plain leather band that's in natural Chrome XL leather. And then uh, this one is a sailcloth strap from, uh, from Barton. So, you know, cue the comments for putting a $20 strap on an $8,000 watch, right? But, um, you know, all black and the dial is, is essentially black. I think it looks pretty good. And then the um, sort of the, the Fotina that's on the, um, the indices and around the bezel and things like that go pretty good with, with the brown um, in the natural Chrome XL. So that's long enough on the Omega. Um, great watch. I love it. And I hope to have it for many years. And then my most recent acquisition, um, sitting over here in a position of prominence in its own little box, is my uh, my most recent pickup, which was just a few months ago for uh, our 10th wedding anniversary. My wife uh, got me this, which is the, uh, huh, here we go, first time on camera, the Gégé Lecoute Master Control Date. So this thing is... Um, about as, in my mind at least, uh, in, in my price range, this is about as classy as a watch can get. So this is uh, 40 millimeters, obviously in-house JLC movement. They do all their movements in-house, um, you know, them being the watchmaker's watchmaker, um, as they like to say. But um, so this thing is, is awesome. Um, you won't be able to see it on the video here. Obviously, if you want, you can look up pictures or other things like that. I don't really have a good macro camera, so I can't do my own shots, but there's plenty out there if you're interested in looking at it. But just the, the balance of the proportions, the, the blued second hand, um, you know, the care with the finishing around the date window and just, just how it is in general, wrist presence is, it's really tough to beat. So um, I, I bust this out. I don't wear it around the house or anything, but I bust it out when we're going out to dinner, things like that, going on a trip. Um, and I really like it. And it's a special watch to me. So I, I hope to make many more memories with this as the years go on. So that's my current collection. Um, I will have one honorable mention, a watch that I got rid of not too long ago. I sold it on uh, Craigslist and I, I'm sort of regretting it. I wish I didn't. I had a Seiko Turtle Save the Oceans edition, the shark one with the uh, hidden shark on the dial. I uh, can't remember the reference off the top of my head. So again, I will pop it up here. And uh, if, if you're, I mean, a lot of you guys, if you're watch people, you know, there's some people that are obsessed with Seiko and some people that just don't get it right. I kind of always felt that I was in the middle of that, that group. So I was a big fan of Seiko. I, I, I appreciated their history and all they've done, you know, horologically for the watch industry over the years. Um, but as their prices started creeping up, I started thinking, like, would I rather have another Seiko Prospects Diver for 700 bucks, or would I rather buy a Hamilton? And, and in my mind, I started thinking, like, I'd probably rather have a Hamilton, or would I just rather save that money and towards my next, you know, big luxury watch? Um, so that's why I sold it. I sold it to raise money for, for a different purchase, um, different future purchase. But I really liked that watch. The, the dial with the hidden shark and just the, the blues and the colors um, was pretty cool. So I kind of regret selling that. So maybe let that be a lesson to you. If you have a watch that you like, don't sell it just for money. You know, just, just keep it. And if you have to save a little bit longer for the next watch you want, you know, just do that. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching today. If you enjoy this kind of content, let me know. Um, if you'd like to see any more about any of these particular watches or if you want to hear my opinions on anything, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I do have a lot to say about watches, but there are so many good watch YouTubers on YouTube that I'm not going to focus too much on my channel about it. I really don't feel like there's a ton I can add other than to just, you know, introduce it to you guys and say I'm, I'm a big fan of watches. And, and you know, they're a part of my, my life and my sartorial journey, if you will. Um, you know, a good watch can help complete, you know, an outfit, things like that. But um, I guess before I go, I wanted to mention a couple other YouTube channels that I really like that help me learn a lot and that are very informative and entertaining. Um, so the first, uh, many of you guys have probably heard of him, uh, Nico Leonard is, uh, one of the most entertaining dudes on YouTube, um, as evidenced by the fact that he went from no subscribers to a million in, I don't know, less than two years, 18 months, something like that. Uh, he basically just does reaction videos to super expensive celebrity watches, but, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's Irish. Um, he's got a, a store there in Belfast, I think is where it is. And he's super entertaining. Um, as far as information goes and just for pure you know, artistry with macro shots and things like that. I think Teddy Baldassar can't be beat. Um, and he's from my, my home state. I'm from Ohio originally. So it's Teddy. So shout out to the Ohio boys. 
Um, he does a lot of great stuff and he puts out tons of content. So if you, if you subscribe to him, uh, you know, and hit that notification bell, you're going to get spammed because he puts out a lot of stuff. And then a newer one I've been watching recently is Britt Pierce, who goes by the watch gringa, I believe. I can't remember the exact story about, about where that came from, but she's a, she's a Canadian living in England, I believe now. And she puts out some really cool stuff. Um, she has a lot of interesting watches. Uh, I believe her husband has a cool collection too. So those get cameoed sometimes, but she's hilarious. So you should definitely check her out if you're into watches. All right. I think this is getting long enough guys. So I want to say thanks for watching. If you made it this far, um, I think that means you like the video. So hit the like button, um, subscribe. If you feel like you like this kind of content, um, I'm still having fun making it. So, uh, I'd like you to be here with me as we grow. So thanks a lot guys. Have a great day.